everybody. Welcome. I'm Gina Trapani, and I am a managing partner here at Postlight, the place where you are sitting right now, uh, Postlight. We are a digital product studio here in New York, uh, which means that we build software and apps and platforms and digital experiences for our clients. Um, and WordPress is one of the many tools that we use, and we're a newly minted uh, WordPress VIP Silver Partner, which I'm very excited about. Um, we work with a wide variety of clients from Goldman Sachs to the Obama Foundation to the National Audubon Society to Bloomberg, but I just wanted to talk about two clients who uh, we work with and actually I work with directly as, as the tech lead to pro projects. Uh, we do a, a quite a bit of media work and uh, with WordPress and we've worked with uh, Vice Media for a long time. Uh, a couple of years ago, HBO and Vice inked a deal in July for a new nightly news show uh, that was going to premiere in September. So we had to get a site up for them that they were going to be publishing, you know, dozens of posts a day, heavy video. We had to do it quickly. And we stood that up with WordPress because it's such an accelerator. Uh, we've worked with the Players' Tribune, which is uh, a little site founded by somebody named Derek Jeter and Kobe Bryant. I'm not, I'm not a sports person, but they're apparently kind of a big deal. Um, and, and in this architecture, uh, we built like two arms of this platform. One was publishing content, uh, first-person stories by athletes, and the other was a database of those athletes, a content relationship management system, which was like a CRM. Uh, which kept track of their teams and their endorsements and helped them measure the impact of their brand. And so the reason why I brought up these two clients and the clients that we work with is one of the coolest things about working at an agency and getting to just talk to people across sectors and organizations, big and small, is that you start to just kind of out of necessity start to like see patterns and like hear similar problems. It's so cool to hear people wrestling kind of with the same issues across the software industry. Um, and so there was a problem that we kept running into over and over, uh, starting before Vice and following after the Players' Tribune. Uh, and it would go a little bit like this. It would be like somebody would come to us and be like, hey, Postlight, can you help us build some software? We, we have a React app built by React developers who love React. They use React to build our app. Uh, we need to put content in that app. What should we do? <laughs> React. Uh, so we were like, okay, yeah, we get it. Okay, wait, what, what's React again? So React is wildly popular, front-end JavaScript framework considered you know, by modern, modern JavaScript developers. It's component-based, developers love it, boot camps teach it, uh, huge sprawling community. Uh, it's declarative, it helps you write code really well. Everyone loves React. So you say, oh, all right, well, you need content in your React app, what about Headless WordPress, that should do it for you. Wait, 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 what's Headless WordPress again? I feel like I'm preaching to the choir in this room, but just to recap real quick, uh, take away all the theming, take away all the front end of WordPress and just get that, that piece, that admin piece that lets you draft content and manage that content and have categorize it and have authors and, and workflows and have it just serve an API. And that API can go anywhere. It can go to a website, it can go to an Alexa skill, it can go to a native you know, mobile app, it can go to an LED scrolling screen, a Raspberry Pi, wherever you want to go, that WordPress content can go. And so that person then looks at you and goes, well, yeah, headless per WordPress, kind of hard to set up, and you know, it probably doesn't do the thing that we need it to do. Uh, and that's a person who's never tried headless before. And so you're like in this situation, you're like, look, you know, there's lots of different solutions, depends on your needs, um, but how can I show you what, what Headless WordPress can do for you? Uh, so again, some, some, somewhere between Vice News and the Players' Tribune, I found myself writing like the same code for the same architecture just over and over and over again. And I was like, what can I do? Just package this up in a one step, you know, spin up this back end, spin up a front end, show you some React, show you some WordPress with some really good plugins and do it just really quickly and have it on your desktop. And so I, I started a Postlight Labs project uh, called the WordPress Plus React Starter Kit, which is a very literal name, uh, but it does great for SEO. Um, and and here's, here's what it looks like. This is the front end of the Starter Kit. And so you've got this one command, you spin it up on your computer and you get this. So who's this for? 
uh, this is an open source toolkit. This is code. So you're going to go to a GitHub repository. And it's for React developers who don't want to set up WordPress. And it's for WordPress developers who are learning React. And it's for anyone who just wants to mess around with a headless WordPress project in a single command on their computer. Uh, so what do you get with it? Out of the box, you get two working example sites uh, made of React components that do like the basic WordPress things that themes do, rendering pages, posts, taxonomies, a little tricky thing in the headless world, which is like previewing content uh, inside the React app. Um, it comes with like the, the plugins that we found ourselves reaching for over and over again, like advanced custom fields and CPT UI. Um, it supports common user things like search, user login, uh, and, and makes cores easy to deal with. Uh, so you can use this starter kit to demo to the doubters, convert the haters, impress your friends uh, with your wisdom and span of software knowledge over the, gen the generations. Speaking of the generations, WordPress is so old, so it must be bad. What about a new thing like Contentful or Ghost? Says this like very enthusiastic React developer just out of coding boot camp. Uh, Contentful and Ghost are great products, and and you know maybe they might work in some situations. Uh, but the, what's what I tr what we were trying to do with the starter kit is sort of demonstrate that WordPress works with modern tech and tooling, and it's all bundled together. And if you have a React developer saying to you, like, I don't, I just don't want to deal with WordPress. This is what you got to do. You just got to snow them with modern tech tool like names and words. So you just be like, well, you know, so you could do SSR if you need, and there's Docker containers and JWT authentication if you really, really want to blow their minds. Be like, well, you know, you could just like expose a GraphQL API from 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 WordPress courtesy of this incredible plugin called WP GraphQL, which I love. What's GraphQL again? Query language for APIs. Uh, you can get all the data that you need in one request. So while the REST API, which is amazing, uh, is great, instead of making six REST requests, you can make one GraphQL request uh, and uh, get from your, from your headless WordPress instance. So what's the takeaway? <laughs> There's no old and new. The old and the new talk to one another. WordPress is a great component of a larger platform that's talking to other pieces of that platform. And when the headless setup, you can have lots of different products, whether that's a custom product or an other off-the-shelf product like Salesforce, all talk together and, and feed content and information to front-end apps, uh, however they uh, manifest. If you want to try out the starter kit, go to postlight.com slash labs. It will send you to a GitHub page. There is code. You'll have to install Docker, just disclaimer. Uh, but give it a try. Let us know what you think. Um, and I have no idea how I did on time. OK, great. Uh, I think I, this is a point where I open up for questions. <laughs> you seem good about that, not short change. Okay, good. Uh, can I, let's uh, get, get five minutes for questions. I want to open it up for questions. Talk to me. Is there anything in Headless that you consistently find yourself saying, you know what, just, like, this, just, this is a really tough thing to solve consistently, or like just one problem in particular you find yourself encountering? I mean, I wrestled with cores issues, like the first couple of headless setups that I did, like, I, like consistently. It took me a, a while to get to the place where I felt like I had a bit of code that made it easy to say the back end is here, the front end is here, and not have that, that cross, uh, cross origin request issue come up. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the thing about headless is because you take all the theming out, which there's a ton of functionality in theming, you find yourself like rebuilding stuff in. React <laughs> that WordPress can do, uh, you know, in, its, in, in a monolithic setup, uh, you know, by itself. And then, and also we've had situations with clients where they'll be like, well, can't you just install this plugin and have it work? And it's like, well, the back end part will work, but we have to do the implementation JavaScript on the front end. So that, I think, is an unexpected cost. Does search just expose core search to the React app, or are you doing something else with search on the back end? So I think, I think the way that we implemented it in the starter kit, just for the sake of like keeping it contained, was to uh, I think I think it just it uses the search uh, REST endpoint, but uh, typically in a in a, on other sites we would use another search solution in a production situation with lots of content. How do you imagine the iteration in the next phases of Gutenberg? 
convert to focus more on full site editing might change what a headless site looks like? Yeah, that's a that's a great great question, and I have to say I'm my I spend less of my days coding uh, these days. So I, Gutenberg's amazing, and I've done a little work with it, but not as much work with it. And I actually I'm not totally sure what the state of uh, exposing Gutenberg blocks is out to the API currently yet, um, but. Uh, yeah, that's a great question that I don't have an answer to. I, I, I think for the last time we looked at it, which wasn't recently, Gutenberg still had a little ways to go, like how do, how do, how do I expose that, those the blocks as structured data through the API? Um, and what would, that, what would that look like? Hi, I'm not Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, I, I thought I was gonna laugh there. It was like a, it was like a weird <laughs> tension. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, you could implement the re the the if you did server side React rendering, that could be implemented in serverlessly. But but yes, unless uh, but WordPress, yes, you you're running MySQL and PHP and maybe Apache. Yeah, I know you're giving me that face. That's the face. That's the face I get from the for, from the React community. It's not it's not that bad. <laughs> it's 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 great. It works and it's great software. I know no, but I do appreciate that face. <laughs> All right, well, let somebody get, let's get WordPress running serverless. <laughs> we can make it happen. Anyone else? Yes. I dealt with uh, state management, um, especially on you know, front end to back end call, and maybe you can speak to, in general, how you dealt with that. Um, that's a good question. So uh, I should have one of my React developers up here answering that answering that question. I mean, I think you know it, it, dep it depends on how you're like. It depends on how you're calling the API and what you're calling the API for. Um, so I mean, it's, there's state management in in React itself, and then there's like. You, you know, user sessions, like am I logged into, am I, do I, you know, can I see this private post, am I logged into this WordPress instance, um, and well, what would that look like? Uh, but I, I have to say that I land more on the, more experience with WordPress than I do React, so I've, I will leave, I, I sh you should talk to him about state management in, in <laughs> React. <laughs> yeah, so state manager, you mean like, like, lo like logged in state, or? Because right. the, the classic thing is, oh, for us to teach a lot of newer WordPress developers will say, no, oh, we can't do state management in WordPress. We're going to go with React. It's not going to solve the problem just going to React. So that's right. what I'm trying to see if right. how, how you currently handle it. I'm assuming you're checking the nonce. We're checking the nonce for like authentic, so like pre like content preview for a draft that hasn't been published. You know, obviously, you, you know, you're checking the nonce to see like do you have the, the rights to see this or a, pro a password protected post. Of course, you have to build the React like the front end to you know to enter a password for say a password protected post. Uh, but yeah, and that, and that and that does require for like a React developer a little bit more knowledge of like the internals of how WordPress works, like the nonce, you know, uh, and, and uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you.